Mr. A.V. Rajwari, consultant uh, in currency and interest rate risk management, is with us. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajwari, pleasure to have you with us here on NDTV. Prashant, this side. Uh, Mr. Rajwari, I want your thoughts on the fallen Good oil prices Russia. and what kind of fiscal room can the government, uh, can it create for the government? And we worked out some numbers, so I just want to sort of highlight those and then I want your reaction on that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also talk about uh, you know what Dr. Rajan okay. sort of pointed out uh, after, in a, in a, in a post-policy interview in which he talked about a crisis, crash, and then his clarification uh, where he said that I don't expect an imminent crash, but India will be tested once again when interest rates rise in the West. So it's all kind of related. Just bear with me for 30 seconds. I want to quickly highlight this uh, uh, point about the fallen oil. So simple uh, calculation actually. Uh, the graphics will come up on your air. Uh, so oil prices uh, were $113 odd on the day of the budget, now $103. A $1 fall in oil prices re results in a, a broad, approximate fall in, of about $1 billion in India's import bill. Uh, now, you know, we are sort of, we're looking at the fiscal deficit, uh, which was projected at about 5,31,200 crores, which is about 4.1% of GDP. Uh, $10, everything else remaining same, and that's the critical operative word, everything else remaining the same. It won't, but we're just assuming it, you know, at this point that everything else remaining the same. $10 falls means 60,000 crores as far as uh, savings as, uh, on the oil import bill goes. Uh, that uh, should result in the fiscal deficit coming uh, down by about 11, 11.5% 11 11 or so. Uh, that 4.1% uh, fiscal deficit number, automatically everything else remaining same and oil staying $10 down from where it was at the time the budget was presented, the fiscal deficit won't be 4.1, it'll be about 3.6, actually about 3.6% or so. Uh, so it's, it's substantial. Now again, everything else remaining the same is the operative word here. The simpler thing to look at is uh, not the fiscal deficit but the trade deficit. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a little more, there are a little lesser moving parts there as far as trade deficit goes. $10 means, I mean, 10% uh, drop means 10% drop in the trade deficit as well. But that's, but we're looking at the FISC, which is, of course, the focus uh, for so many in the market. Rightly or wrongly, that's a different thing. <coughs> Mr. Rajwari, your comments on this, sir. How would you look at it? Would you, would you believe that this would create uh, uh, substantial fiscal room for the government? This can create... Uh, well, uh, I think the two <coughs> reservations which you made, that uh, the oil price remains at the current level, and the other assumption, of course, underlying all the numbers, is that the government had assumed the oil price to remain $113 per barrel uh, through the years. Now, that was the price when the uh, budget was announced, but what were the assumptions? Uh, at least I haven't come across... Uh, those numbers. Also, the in general, the uh, Middle East is still an extremely volatile uh, region. You know, wars are raging in Libya, in Syria, in uh, Iraq. Uh, so I think uh, uh, to take it for granted that uh, the oil price will remain at current levels uh, may not be uh, a very realistic uh, assumption. I think the second point, and which to my mind is uh, uh, very important, is that uh, the ultimate numbers, uh, I think last few years, we have been uh, arriving at the ultimate numbers on the basis of a lot of creative accounting. I mean, a lot of creative accounting has gone into uh, the uh, government uh, uh, budgets and uh, all those numbers. Uh, you know, for one thing, the starting point, of course, is that uh, government uh, deficits and Budgets are made on a cash basis, not on a accrual basis. So merely by postponing subsidies to the next year, or uh, as uh, Mr. Chidambaram did last year, uh, he asked uh, P major PSUs to uh, sort of declare interim dividends, and what would have been revenue this year came in the previous year. So I think uh, uh, the largest single impact uh, on uh, the deficit also is how much of creative accounting ultimately gets uh, uh, built into the numbers which come out. So I think that's uh, sort of one factor. The third 
uh, as I have, uh, I think, in an earlier interview also, I had emphasized. To my mind, it is not the quantity of the fiscal deficit that is uh, uh, crucial. The uh, total government debt as a proportion of nominal GDP has been coming down. I think the crucial uh, uh, missing variable is the quality of the deficit. It is arising because of revenue expenditures, not because of investments. And I think investments uh, are essential uh, if we are to grow faster than what we have been doing for the last couple of years. Absolutely. And uh, those are very good points, solid points, which you've sort of highlighted earlier as well. Uh, you know, uh, sir, even if, even if uh, the, the, there's no reduction in the fiscal deficit, right, uh, I just want to go back to that point. Uh, that for no great achievement of the government. Uh, by the way, the IEA yesterday cut uh, the, uh, the, the uh, forecast for oil demand. Uh, so, I mean, I guess that's good news uh, for, all, I mean, you know, for people who are hoping that oil prices are actually correct, yes, you know, right. countries like India. Uh, would, would this help uh, Mr. Jaitley stick to the 4.1% number? Oh. Because there itself, as you pointed out, I mean, there's so much jugglery and so many, you know, so many ways you can get to the 4.1%, but it wouldn't mean anything even if you got to the 4.1%. But this would be pretty straightforward. If oil's down, uh, you know, you, you, you could get to that 4.1% without too much jugglery. Uh, I, I would uh, agree with you if it remained there. And I think uh, I do not know what will happen in the current fiscal year. But overall, if you take a medium-term view, say a five-year view, I think there are greater chances of oil prices coming down rather than uh, remaining at the current levels. The principal reason to my mind is the fact that the U.S., which was the largest importer of oil historically for the last several decades, I think there the shale oil uh, uh, production is going up so fast that uh, uh, on a net basis, the uh, U.S. will probably come to a zero level in a few years' time. So I think that's a major structural change in the uh, uh, sort of oil economy of the world. And uh, to that extent, the IEA, the International Energy Association numbers, I'm sure they are taking into account uh, uh, this fact that uh, what was at one time the world's largest importer uh, may, not need, may not become, may not remain an importer net importer uh, for a much longer time. So I think that's a, is a major structural change in the uh, global oil economy. Of course, to some extent, that will be balanced by the fact that uh, uh, oil uh, consumption or oil and oil products consumption in all the emerging economies mm. continues to grow. I think it's growing in China. Mm. Also, while price certainly is one aspect of our import bill, the other equally is whether the consumption of the oil and uh, oil products mm. remains stationary. Now, yeah. each year it uh, has been growing and I think it, uh, for the foreseeable future it will likely to grow. So to that extent, the uh, fall in the deficit mm. uh, would be tempered. But yes, on a medium term uh, perspective, uh, uh, one can expect that uh, oil, which is our single largest uh, import item, uh, the price is, uh, there is likely to be a secular decline mm. in the uh, global price of 